Hello, in this demonstration I am going to show you how to use the Windows 7 performance monitor to help you identify the performance you're getting out of your Windows 7 computer. The four key areas we'll look at are processor, memory, disk drive, and network. We'll start by using a Windows 7 virtual machine running inside of VMware Player. And I need to launch my performance monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on the Start button, and then Control Panel, and then System and Security, and then Administrative Tools. Inside of Administrative Tools, I'm going to double click Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor will open and I need to select the monitoring tool Performance Monitor. There is one default counter in Performance Monitor and that's percent processor time. This is how much time the processor is processing work versus being idle. I don't want that one so I'm going to highlight it and click on the red X to delete that counter. From here, I want to add my own performance counters. So I'm going to click on the Add button, the green plus, and inside of my Add Counters box, it opens. I can choose to select counters from computer. That's the local computer. In this case, I am going to choose counters from my computer. but in an enterprise environment, it's actually best to monitor one computer using a different computer. And that's due to the fact that the act of performance monitoring also generates overhead. So you don't want that monitoring overhead factored into the computer you're actually monitoring. So this box here shows performance objects. A performance object is an object that you want to monitor, but each object has several counters that you can get more specific in exactly what you're going to monitor. So I want to select server work queue as an object. So if I scroll down, there's server work queue, and if I expand server work queue, I can then scroll down to queue length and queue length has instances and instances would be for example if there are multiple processors I could monitor each process individually uh, or I can monitor all instances in this case I want instant zero and what a queue length is in a server work queue is essentially how much work is waiting to be processed or worked on by the server. So I'm going to add this to my counter list and now I'm going to monitor server work queues queue length. If I want to know additional information about this or if I want to know what an acceptable guideline for a server work queue queue length could be, there's a box down here show description which gives me a brief description. Queue length is the current length of the server work queue for this CPU. A sustained queue length greater than four might indicate process or congestion. Uh, so that's a nice little help. Okay, beyond this, I also want to monitor the system, expand system, and select processor queue length. And processor queue length, um, we'll click on this, and show description. Processor queue length is the number of threads in the processor queue. Threads are going to be threads of information waiting to be processed, not threads that are already being processed, but essentially threads that are waiting to be processed. A sustained processor queue length of less than 10 threads per processor is normally acceptable. So I want to go ahead and add processor queue length. I also want to go into the memory object, so we're going to collapse system, go back up into memory,
and we'll expand memory. And here I want page faults per second and we'll add that and I also want pages per second. Page faults per second essentially is identifying how many times per second does the computer need a page of memory that's not where it should be. It could either be a hard fault meaning it's on a physical disk which is going to cause huge latency or it could be a soft fault which means it's still in memory but it's not where the operating system thinks it should be so it still needs to retrieve it. Numerous soft faults are not going to affect the performance of a computer but if you are having hard faults you need to get that under control quickly because that's serious performance degradation. Pages per second is the rate at which pages are read from or written to disk to resolve hard page faults. We also want the physical disk object so we'll expand physical disk and we want to get the current disk queue length. So we'll scroll to current disk queue length and we would like the total. We'll click on add and this is essentially the number of requests waiting to be performed by the disk drives. If you have a physical disk queue length that is also going to cause performance degradation. The last thing that we would like to capture is network interface. So we'll collapse physical disk and go to network interface and expand. And now we would like packets per second and output queue length. So there's packets per second. We'll capture that and then output queue length and we'll capture that. And this is a standard set of counters to get a good read on what's happening in your Windows 7 computer. If we click on OK, you'll see that we've got a line graph right now that's showing performance statistics. In this sort of a graph, it might be difficult to understand which one of these counters is what on the window. So if you highlight page faults or pages per second, you kind of have some color variation, but it doesn't change the graph. However, a highlight and then pressing control H on your keyboard is now going to highlight whatever counter you are selecting. So you can see that page faults per second is quite high. Output queue length is quite low. Current disk queue length is also quite low. Processor queue length has some variation. So I'm going to open some applications just to generate some traffic in the computer so we can take a look at this. And I'll minimize these things. And now you'll see we generated some traffic. From here we can also adjust the graph size. Now I want to show you uh, if we increase the graph. Right now we're going from 0 to 100. If I click on properties and go to the graph tab I can change the vertical scale to a maximum of 200. This actually makes it more difficult to read the majority of the counters and the page faults per second actually gets a little easier because that's uh, going very high whereas the other ones are quite low. So maybe it would make more sense to click on properties and go to the graph tab and change our maximum scale to 50. And now it looks like there's a lot more activity but it's a little easier to read with the exception of page faults per second. It's always best to have data counters on the same graph that are going to be generating similar numbers so you can have a data scale that's easier to read. You'll see here we've got the instance from our Intel Pro 1000 network interface of output queue length. That is flatline. That's very difficult to read on a graph that even goes to 50. So you want to segregate your graphs to have counters that match a similar data scale. So this is briefly how you use the Windows Performance Monitor 
in Windows 7. This concludes my demonstration. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you very much for watching.